The April Refines are here, and while there weren't a lot of units in this batch, man did intelligence systems cook. These are some great refines. Let's start off with one of the most hyped characters, Lysithia. So we have Hades Omega, this has slaying, and then if she initiates combat or if she's within two spaces of an ally, she'll get attack and speed plus five. She'll get to neutralize her own penalties to attack and speed during combat. And if she has a special that has a special cooldown of less than or equal to two, she'll get an additional attack and speed plus seven during combat. Once again, if she initiates combat or if she has a foe whose range is equal to 2, she'll get another attack and speed plus 5. She gets 20% true damage based off her speed, but does not work with AoEs. She gets a dull speed and resistance effect, so she can ignore those bonuses on the foe. And then also if she has an offensive special, she'll get special jump plus 1. So overall, I think I got a pretty powerful refine here. She's getting attack and speed plus 17, which is a ton of stats. She also has a way to like neutralize her own penalties, which is really good in the current meta because there's so much sabotage and debuffs being thrown around. 20% speed based true damage is also very, very good. Dull speed and res is also good because it allows you to get into those matchups against those Omni tanks who are just stacking visible bonuses, right? Either it be through like bonus doubler or some other effect, right? It, you really want to be able to get past that. So that's very, very good. And the special jump one actually lets her use bigger specials. So when you combine this with like slang, she can easily use three cooldown specials and proc them pretty consistently, or even use two if you want to like be completely secure. Either way, like this is going to be able to hit really, really hard. Now, is this like a meta defining refine? I don't think so, but it definitely makes Lysithia a pretty powerful nuke uh, with the right builds. The thing is that it, her builds are gonna be a little bit stiff as you do have to use something like Magic Mill Follow Up or like a Tempo 4, as she doesn't have a way to get through damage reduction very consistently. But as an infantry, that shouldn't be that big of a problem. Overall, I think they got a pretty solid refine that makes her definitely usable in our current meta, and I'm excited to see just how hard she can really hit. Okay, next let's move on to Lilith. So Lilith has Astro Breath, this grants speed plus three. She can now move to a space within two spaces of her support partner, so just extending that warping range, which is really nice. And then at start of turn, if she's within three spaces of her support partner, she's gonna grant a speed, defense, and resistance plus six visible bonus and dodge as a visible bonus to herself and the support partner. If she's with three spaces of any ally, she'll get plus five to all stats, and she'll restore seven HP after combat, and of course she has dragon adaptive damage. We then move on to a refine where there's some algebra. If uh, HP is going to go 29%, she'll get attack, speed, defense, and res plus X, where X is the number of spaces from start position to end position, max of eight. So this is essentially like a clash effect, and it's gonna work really well with her warping. She also gets true damage based off of Y, which is the highest total bonuses on herself and allies within two spaces. So like. With her own buffs, that'll be 18 true damage, but you could get up to like 24 pretty easily, so that's pretty solid. And then finally, she'll get full no follow-up. This refine is pretty decent. It does give her a lot of stats, gives her a lot of support options, which is really, really nice because that's what she really wants to do. The problem is, is that Lilith really is in a role where she wants to be a support unit, but she also wants to be able to teleport in and nuke something. And while she does get a good amount of true damage and some like NFU and stuff so she can secure hits, she doesn't have a reliable way to get through damage reduction at this point. Uh, you're kind of like relight on legendary Camilla as she doesn't have like access to like magic mill follow up or tempo or stuff like that. And so because of that, a lot of times she's going to teleport in and not be able to kill things. Uh, she can snipe like the weaker units, so she can fulfill that role to an extent. But because she can't like kill everything, I do think she's going to struggle a little bit. Uh, aerial maneuvers will be pretty good on her so that way she can double without getting hit and getting possibly killed. So while I do think this is an upgrade overall, I don't think it's anything like really groundbreaking. It doesn't really make Lilith like super desirable in my opinion. Let's move on to our Fallen unit of this refined match, Fallen Julia. So we have Dark Scripture, grant stack plus three, at start of player phase or enemy phase, so this is the effect that can get around like false start. If any foes within three rows or three columns centered on Julia have less resistance than her, plus five. She inflicts attack and res minus seven on them, so the sabotage debuff and the deep wounds debuff as well. Lastly, she also puts an anti-miracle effect on them, which is really powerful. So any non-special miracle effect, like something you see from like Fallen Maria or Ymir, will get turned off. Then if the foe initiates combat or if Julia is solo, she'll inflict attack and res minus six and speed minus four on the foe, and she'll get a guaranteed fall attack. Also, if her HP is greater than 25%, she'll inflict another minus four speed, attack, and resistance on the foe. She'll have a fall up denial effect. She'll get 20% true damage based off her resistance, but does not work with AoEs. And then lastly, if her res is greater than the foe's res, she'll get a dragon roll effect, up to 40% uh, res based damage reduction. So this refine is really interesting because she kind of has a ploy effect in her weapon, but it works differently, right? Like you're not turning off bonus doubler and grad strategy. Instead, you're inflicting sabotage. Sabotage is an extremely powerful debuff in our current meta and deep wounds. And deep wounds is really interesting because uh, recently it has come back into the meta because 
Omni tanks essentially what they have to do because there's so much burn damage being thrown around by like, you know, do a Sonicky and do a Leon that they have to have a lot of healing support. Like we've seen this with Emblem Ike as well. So being able to put deep wounds on enemies is really powerful. It can shut down a lot of Omni tanks. That's really interesting. They also just have Miracle, which is another way that Omni tanks are trying to survive. So Julia actually has a really powerful refine here where she can actually like be anti-meta against all these Omni tanks who are trying to find out different ways to survive, right? She shuts down a majority of them. She does get a pretty good amount of damage as well. The one thing is, is that she doesn't avoid a pierce damage reduction, which means you're gonna have to run something like attack res tempo four or like special spiral four or something like that, right? That's essentially what you're gonna have to do there. The one bigness, big weakness I will say about Julia is that everything in her kit is based off her resistance. Uh, she does have a pretty good resistance stat at like max merges, it's like 55. Uh, but as new units come out, that resistance like high is being pushed constantly, right? There's like a resistance power creep. So I do think that is something you have to consider, right? Like how are you going to build Julia where you have enough power where she can nuke something, but also enough resistance where she can hit all of her effects. So I think overall, this is a very powerful refine, very anti-meta. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, it's just, you're gonna have to be very careful with how you build her to make sure that all those effects are active all the time. Okay, let's move on to our free to play unit of the match, George. So we have Daniel made bow, slaying, effective against flying foes. You grant attack and defense plus five to allies within four spaces during combat. You inflict attack and defense minus five on foes within four spaces of unit, and those foes suffer guaranteed fall attacks during combat. And then we have the refine. At start of turn, if you're within space, three spaces of an ally, you get attack and speed plus six as a visible buff, hex blade, and special acceleration to George and allies within two spaces of unit for one turn. And then if he initiates combat or if he's within two spaces of an ally, he'll get attack and defense plus five during combat. This refine is actually kind of absurd. Now I know a lot of people will kind of see this and like kind of blow it off. The thing you have to remember is that the current Omni Tank meta has like four standout units and two of them are quite slow. And so having this amount of stat bonuses is really, really good. Especially what you're getting here is attack plus 10, defense plus 10, and resistance plus five, which is really solid. And it is a daunt effect too, which is really powerful. It also has a very solid range, which means you can start stand a little bit farther back and still get these off. You also get guaranteed follow-up attack support, which doesn't seem that insane, but if you watch my Ike video, one of the big things I talked about was that he suffered because he didn't have a guaranteed follow-up attack. So having that kind of effect is really good as support for these slower units like Altina or Emblem Ike. But then you go even farther, right? Like that's already really powerful support. But then when you consider that you're giving out visible attack as people at six, which means like you're getting half of the buffs you need, right? You just need defense and res. You're getting hex play, which is giving adaptive damage and even special acceleration. Like this really just gives you a full package support kit. And I think uh, George is just really, really solid. Like this is just a very powerful support unit. They put almost all of his effects into support. Like the only effect that he has that doesn't affect his allies is attack and defense plus five, which is like completely fine. So I think George is going to be up there with like Ashnard and Spring Mirabilis as a really powerful Omni tank support for the slower Omni tanks, right? That's where he's going to really, really succeed at. And I think this unit is just overall like a big win. I think this is like a massive win and I don't think you should be underestimating this unit because he offers really good support and he's an infantry, which means he can offer additional support because he has really good options for skill inheritance. Overall, I'm extremely impressed. Our final refine of the night is going to be Bryo Nyla one of my favorites. Uh, so we have Bride's Fang, Slaying, at start of turn, grant special cooldown count minus one. If unit initiates combat or if foe's HP is greater than 75%, you're gonna get minus five to all stats on the foe. You're gonna get 40% damage reduction against the foe's first attack, and this is a brave effect. Uh, if special triggers before or during combat, you're gonna get special cooldown count minus two after combat. You're gonna get the infantry beast transformation, which is seven true damage when the special triggers, and you get full tempo. That's really, really big. Then we get to the actual refine itself. You get Kanto remaining plus one while transformed. And then at start of turn, if you are transformed, you're gonna get plus one movement and you cannot be slowed by terrain. You're gonna get another minus four to all stats on the foe during combat. You're gonna restore seven HP after combat. And then also when your special triggers, as long as it's not an AOE, you'll get full damage reduction piercing. This refine is pretty spicy. I like this a lot. Now, the thing to really notice about this refine is that it gives Nyla a ton of build versatility. Essentially, she has like a times pulse effect, but it's not based off max special cooldown, which means that you can use bigger cooldowns and it will constantly be charging every single turn. This means that Nyla can use stuff like AoEs very effectively, though she won't get the damage reduction piercing, 
but she can also use stuff like Miracle or Aether very effectively too because she has special Spiral built into her weapon combined with that special cooldown minus one at the start of every turn and slaying. So it makes it so that she can use both emblem rings very, very effectively, which is really cool. And the other thing is that she has full tempo, which means that she has no way to get her specials turned off, right? She's always gonna be able to charge her specials during combat. So it just makes it so that Nyla can use a variety of different specials, which is really powerful. And it also opens up her B slot because she gets damage reduction piercing in her actual weapon. It means that she doesn't have to run something like physical no follow-up or special spiral four, right? She can actually use something like the beast transformation skills so like counter roar or like beast sense four right and that's really good on her not only that though she has very high mobility and she has canto so she can go in get past those trees murder somebody and then get back out which is really nice she has some healing which helps her a little bit as well i think this refine is really really solid overall now it's not gonna make bridal now like the best omni tank in the game or anything like that but it gives her a lot of different options and it really makes her like open to the future for possible upgrades that might come for either beast units or infantry units. And so while I don't think Nyla will be breaking the game by any means, I do think she's a really solid unit now and she just has a lot of options and I'm really excited to see what people cook with her. Okay, let's move on to the final part of the video. Who won the refining wars for April? So all these units I think got really solid refines, but I don't think any of them are meta-defining. Overall, I do like George's the best as I think it fits into the meta currently the best. Essentially, he gives support to the best Omni tanks in the game and it's really, really strong support. And so I do like that a ton. And I think he's gonna fit in very well there. Fallen Julia is in the opposite camp where she's very anti-meta. And so I think she's very usable in like something like Aetherade's defense. You could even put like a ploy skill on her and she's just debuffing a ton of different things. And she's turning off a lot of the effects Omni tanks need to survive. So I think Julia is actually in a very good position as well. Like I mentioned, Brian Nyla is just very versatile and fun. I think she overall just got a really strong kit that will like be pretty future proof. Lysithia, once again, great nuke. I don't think she's going to be like a meta defining nuke by any means. I don't think you're going to see her like all over the place, but she can do her job a lot better. And so I think it's a very solid refine. The only unit I'm going to have down in B tier is Lilith. I think that she definitely did get better overall, but she didn't get the key effects she needs. And unfortunately, as a flyer, she doesn't really have ways to get those key effects without like legendary Camilla support, essentially. And so her build options and her team options are kind of limited. And so I don't think this is a bad refine by any means. I just don't think it's a broken refine. So I'm going to put her in B tier. But now I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of this refine batch? Who are you going to be refining? What kind of builds are you going to be using? Because these units have a lot of versatility in them. So I would love to see what you're cooking with all of these units. As always, I'd like to thank all my members for their constant support. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. This is Bob Oblivion. I'll catch you all later with more Fire Heroes.